Radiant Team Ban. Nah. OGs turn to ban. <sighs> Radiant Team Ban. Ten seconds <sighs> remaining. OGs turn to ban. <laughs> Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Crystal Maiden. OG's turn to pick. Naga Siren. OG's turn to pick. Disruptor. Radiant Team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Meeks assassin. OG's turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. OG's turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Yeah. Radiant Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <clears throat>
OGs turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Magi! OG's turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. War Chief. Radiant Team Pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. OG's turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant Team Ban.
Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Radiant team pick. Outworld devourer. OG's turn to pick. Templar assassin. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. As many people have pointed out, it seems like OG have gotten themselves stuck in a pattern. They constantly have the Southeast Asian teams as some sort of sticking point. They've been eliminated from a major Valve tournament twice now by a Southeast Asian team, and this could be the third one as they are just one game away from being eliminated once again and going out in the bottom, like, not being able to make it to the top four would be a huge blow to OG. Yeah, definitely one of the expected teams to do really well. After the group stage, they had some issues, but this game looks better, at least, than game one. Game one was a lot of what OG wanted, but it didn't fit together well. This game, at least, I feel like they have lots of team fight control. Not necessarily active control, more like, we decide where to fight. If it's going bad, we're going to song. If you're going to run away, we're going to glimpse you back. And they're also going to have Stampede to chase or escape. So I feel like OG has a lot better tools to protect the one guy that needs a lot of farm this game. And that's mostly Naga Siren. Obviously some TNA as well, but I feel like they'll better be able to do what they want to do at all stages of the game with this lineup. And I kind of want to get a, a jump ahead on this storyline because I know people are going to go to it. Once again, OG are going for another Radiance hero, right? Another yeah. Radiance illusion hero. They tried it in the first game, didn't work out with the Alchemist. We obviously, that was the storyline from DAC as well, and they failed to actually close out that game against uh, against IG. They couldn't close out that, that final series. So do you think they're going to have a similar problem here? Because it did seem like Faceless had uh, a very strict game plan to be able to deal with that Alchemist. Do you think we're going to see a similar game plan here in this game too? Yeah, I, I mean, Faceless seems to have on, almost exactly the same draft, really. Uh, yes. They've got Morphling, they've got Crystal Mating, they've got Ogre. They have the same accelerants, they have the same map pressure, they have the same laning advantage, but the difference is that I, I just feel like OG's lineup can do so much more this game. They can pressure aggressively. I think Pudge could really pay off here. Um, it looks like they're actually going for an aggro try, and this has been predicted. Uh, the next Assassin is going to be in the safe lane here. Faceless is uh, know what they're what to, what to expect, and uh, that'll be up against Centaur versus Morphling right now. And 
Possibly. Yeah, it'll be a 2v1 eventually, but it will start in 1v1. So I think this is overall pretty good for both teams. Uh, both Centaur and Nyx are definitely good if they get some levels. But I would say this maybe favors Nyx more. Because the faster he gets a 6 here, that's going to change a lot of this early game. He's going to try to kill all the illusions here. But that actually could cause a lot of trouble for Ice Ice Ice. He's going to lose a lot of HP right now. In mid lane, we do have a uh, slight advantage to Faceless as well, with XY uh, currently standing as the bodyguard to Jabs' OD. Uh, obviously, that Ignite, very good versus the Refraction. Bottom lane, Ice 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 does burn down a little bit low on the Nyx Assassin. Looks like he should be fine, though. Uh, the Pudge, a great roaming 4 position, but can't really e uh, like he can't really offset the power of what the Ogre does. Um, top lane, looks like they are going to have a go here on the Black, and he's actually going to die. They're just going to slow him down enough. He can't morph strength Huge for too much kill. longer, so first blood for S4. Now the Centaur, like especially if you get Shrink Boots and that sort of thing, like he can actually play this lane very double-edge heavy against the Morphling and force him out of that max agility that the Morphling's usually so comfortable in 1v1. Yeah, such a great time to get a gank off. A uh, Morphling free waveform is really the best window for OG, considering that they don't have a lot of disable. Um, they've got lots of damage, and Glimpse will be very effective sometimes, but a big first blood to start off the game. And Morphling's practically off lane right now. Just the pressure of uh, Jarex being there is going to make him just play a lot safer. He didn't even go for the last hits on that last wave. Didn't even guarantee the level 2 because he's just so afraid that Jarex would show up again. He finally does pick up the level 2 and it should feel a little bit more safe. But even then, right, if Pudge loops around, he slows you down, you're forced to wave for him, you could still be got by the hook, right? It's a simple straight line. So th this is definitely going to be a lane that at some point in time, our Morphling is going to need the assistance of Nuts. Nuts has picked up his level 2, cleared out that offlane jungle, and will now join his carry. And in the meantime, no Tail just still playing uh, the, uh, the offlane Naga Siren. It's actually semi-viable in a 1v1 situation as long as the supports don't rotate over. But the hero they want to pressure is Pudge, actually. Oh, they've almost got him, but they just kept the vision. Oh, oh nice play from Jerex. He's going to be able to catch Nuts here, but can he actually chase out this kill? A lot of tower shots onto Nuts there. He's he got will boots, manage though. to... Oh, no. He got hit by that Thunderstrike and is going to end up going down now. XY is going to be cornered up by S4. He did have the double damage. It's now faded. He won't be able to get the damage to get a counter kill. Jerex does manage to hit the hook. Cleans up that kill. 0-3 now OG off to a much better start it seems for this laning phase in game two and that hook changed the whole early game because it got so many tower hits off on the crystal maybe just got boots but tower hits and the, the follow-up from the rest of the allies making a big difference perfect decision making as well for S4 to go for the follow-up kill not necessarily the guaranteed one and OG off to an amazing start in the early game uh, Black does get all the range creeps to his tower though that would have been a huge advantage for OG um, either way I don't think they can complain too much considering how things are going Absolutely not. Naga Siren kind of free farming. The only one who's really been pressured has been Anna's Templar Assassin. And you still have some comeback mechanisms to be able to fall back on, like uh, being able to play off of Ancients and that sort of thing. And He's not even that far behind anyways. Yeah. Maybe he will be soon though. Yeah, we are going to need the help. The assistance of Jarex's Pudge. He's trying to line up for a hook right now, but the kind of body blocking Anna out. Jarex doesn't have a clear shot, so instead he's going to be forced to hit XY, but bringing him into the tower doesn't do much to the tanky Ogre. Nice rebuttal there from Faceless, managing to pick up that mid kill on Anna. Even if they are not faring the best in their side lanes, at least they're still winning mid. Yeah, this is really nice gank, and once again, Nuts is there at the perfect time to land his combo. Uh, did a great job as well walking to the right, trying to avoid getting hooked under tower. He feared the hook after that last one. We'll see if it affects his play, but OG's going to be happy. Um, oh, just a little bit shy there from Jarex. Mid lane. Jabs. Sees a little bit of damage there from the Thunderstrike, but again, XY always in the neighborhood and is a force to be reckoned with. Nobody really wants to challenge Faceless while he's around. Oh, this is that Disruptor set. That's really cool. What about this one? Oh, he's got the samurai hat. That's like super rare or something. That's awesome. I just want to talk about cosmetics. I'll cast you down. No? No. Okay. I'm not, I'm not a cosmetics guy, unfortunately, Kevin. I only That's care fun. about That's my fun. looks outside of the game. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Makes sense. All right. Nagus Iron picking up five in the offlane. It's almost time for him to leave, I think. It's that like five to seven minute period. Like, oh, we start on aggro try, but at some point you have to fear the, the ganks and the, the reasons that offlane usually is a bit dangerous. but. Faster arcane boots for him, that basically means his, his farm acceleration will be there. But Fly's going to rotate to the bot lane. Uh, S4 TPing in, going to start the first rotation. And they're actually holding a skill point on a no tail. Maybe they're hoping to do like an ensnare into a stun or hook into Centaur Stomp. 
Center is still five mana short, and the creeps definitely reveal S4 here. So, uh, yeah, they're just going to play normal with this one. Nago rotating this uh, safely? No. This early uh, Vanguard build from the Centaur is kind of interesting. Uh, he's yeah. got the queued up for the Vitality Booster. I actually like it a lot. There are a lot of right clicks needed from Faceless. Both Ogre and CM, they have great nuke damage, but their right clicks are definitely a large part about that as well. Maybe not CMs, but you know, if, if you get a Vanguard block early in the game, that's like 100% of a right click. 70 damage is huge in the early game, so if he's got these levels and it helps him basically go wherever he wants to, I, I think it'll make a big impact. Do you think it's more valuable than the uh, Hooded Defiance? Which would be the normal, you know, other tanky item for a Centaur to pick up. You know, I think this game Vanguard is definitely the safer move. Um, obviously, okay. there's a lot of magic damage. Oh, No-Tail might be in trouble here. No-Tail, slow down. They are going to be able to get the waveform in front of them. Kind of body blocking him with the uh, Thunder oh. Show. Oh, nice hook there from the side of Jerex. It's going to be able to save the life of No-Tail here. Black is dropping kind of low, but it looks like they're still going to pursue out Jerex. Try and at least get something off of this one. Oh, it looks like, no, no it's a night too. Oh, Jerex is doing so much. You know, I was asking you, I was like, eh, Pudge, do you really think that's worth it? But it does seem like the combination of having a four position that roams and being able to operate as a saving hero is working out very nicely for OG. Yeah, everybody has been so heavily favoring things like Monkey King, but uh, Pudge is a very abusable. Meat Hook is one of the most OP abilities considering it's like two ranges of four staff. It puts If it puts your opponent out of uh, position, gets them under tower, that's a lot of damage you'd never get out of a Monkey King. Looking at that net worth chart, it's looking pretty pretty for uh, the OG members. They've got their top three cores in the top four. The OD is in there, and Nyx Assassin's not too far behind that top four area, but it's, it's that uh, that Morphling that's really suffering. Yeah, he's sitting about the same farm as the Pudge. That's not a good sign. He's still been playing a sort of offlane role, which may mean that it's very heavily on jabs here to have a good early game. Feel, but the waveform's there to get the extra damage. Maybe XY oh, can him. chase him down. Just needs more right clicks, and they got it from Nuts. I did his best there to stay alive. They do get the jab skill in the oh, mid lane. Oh, that is huge. Anna needed something like that to be able to come back into this game. Great nice rotation. So to finish the Vanguard thought, I, I, Hood is great this game. There's a lot of magic damage, but a Vanguard at this point in the game is an extra 250 HP. And in some ways, you could you could say the health is equivalent to magic resistance. So, and Plus, it also blocks right-click physical attack. So I feel like they're kind of comparable. Obviously, Hood's going to scale better as Centaur's HP increases massively. But because he got this so early and he's got so many levels, I think you can just buy this. It covers you against all situations, and you can just bully your lane. Maybe once, too, you can always get the Hood of Defiance a little bit later. I'm Presuming yep. his uh, second choice is still going to be the Blink Dagger. I doubt he'll deviate that much. Yeah, probably. With two more Tangos in the Vanguard, he's going to hit full HP pretty soon. And level 7 on him is a lot of damage threat, actually. If anybody ends up getting caught here. Ice Ice, TC, uh, Ice, Ice, Ice TPing to the Shrine, going for an Invis gank to the top lane now. But... Oh, never mind. That's actually uh, Faces of Vision. They do have a, a sentry here, so Blind's going to be able to spot him out, but he does get his combination out, so maybe the Morphling can finish up. Again, the waveform and the right click does manage to secure a kill on a support. So, Ice Ice Ice, the beginning of his notorious off lane rotations have just begun. Uh, the downside of not having a stun. That's like that, that would never happen otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, poor Disruptor. OG now pressuring the offlane tower, just Jerex and Pudge here, but that's a really potent duo. They could threaten a lot of heroes right now. Another thing really going for, for OG this game is uh, the, the OD banish. Astral's obviously a great skill, but there's a lot of situations where it's just going to give you an easy hook or a defensive one as well. But they're going to TP to go in on this. They want to pressure the Centaur. Looks like Faceless may have read the timing on this one. S4 does have his ultimate, but Ice 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 is able to hit the stun there. Nice hook back there from Jerex. Gaining more control. Now popping the ultimate. They're actually going to run over nuts. Look for more. S4 gets stunned up by the Ogre, but they will at least claim the life of the Crystal Maiden. Ice 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 slowed down. Now Anna's here as well. Another great hook from Jerex. He is on point here. XY pull back by Fly. A third kill picked up by OG. This is not going to be the one-sided stomp we saw in game number one. Oh, it might be just the other way around, yeah. perhaps. <laughs> I mean, great, great ability to pressure there. So, S4 still hasn't picked up a point in return, and it's really paying off, actually. The, the extra hoof stomp stun duration, the extra damage from that is making the difference. And even Glimpse looks so powerful uh, with a center on your team like that, if he's got enough time to get the cooldown off again. And he doesn't even need a blink dagger. That's what it feels like right now. But he's still making the initiations happen just by being tanky.
It looks like they're going to be able to create a, a lot of space for both Anna right now. He could use a little bit of space to farm up his first item, which he's currently got queued up his Blink Dagger, um, but especially No Tail. Uh, no Tail could use this extra time to complete that Radiance. So I'm presuming we're going to see OG continue to be quite aggressive with at least this trio. And you can see them currently trying to set up for a pickoff on Ice, 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 but he snapped. They do manage to get the spike, care face, turn around, stun. Jarex is going to get popped by that one. Nice play from Ice, 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 but it looks like he may still be giving up his life. Maybe not. TPN from Jabs is going to be able to catch the Centaur. Good send back there from Fly. Does save the life of Ice, Ice, Ice as he claims a kill. Yeah, but S4 as well. The, the glimpse is absolutely important. Oh, Jarex actually knows where Jabs win, I think. Oh, he sees him, yeah. So he sees him now. Hooks. No, that's yeah. way off the mic. It's okay, Jarex. You landed a lot of them. Slightly wrong estimation. Um, he also popped the tome before he did move to the bot lane, and he was just a fraction away from six. A bit unfortunate he didn't have slightly more experience. Maybe would have killed Ice 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 then. Um, Odie even rotated all the way to the top lane there just to try to set up the kill on No Tail with an Invis rune. But after TP and bottom and getting, getting glimpsed back, that actually wasted a lot of that guy's time. He does still have Midas, though, so he'll be all right. I see Black, and he, he's farming up, but he's still kind of suffering in the net worth. And with the pressure that's heading down bottom lane, Ice 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 is actually having some issues as well. A little bit surprised he's not moving around a, a bit more with this Nyx Assassin, but... I guess with the combination of pressure and as well as him wanting to be able to build into that uh, hand of Midas, his uh, ganks are actually going to come to his lane, it looks like. Jabs looking for the imprisonment to set up the stun. S4 Ooh. hides himself in the trees very nicely. And Jabs does not let go for the melee contest. Yeah, they just, they, they, they doubt they have enough damage. They get a hook on Bye -bye. the mid lane. That Nuts goes down. That was a very dead Crystal Maiden. Anna actually picks up double damage for his bottle. That's a big pickup. Maybe threatened uh, an early tower. Imprisonment pushes out the wave. I, I just feel like Faceless doesn't have enough damage output. It's, it's the main issue. Uh, the, I mean, they could have maybe gone for the Centaur in the trees, but when he just gets defensive like that, he's playing with all of his tools. He's got a 10 stick. He's got a Quelling Blade, so he can juke into trees and get stomps off. It's just very difficult for Faceless to guarantee those kills. And Black would probably love to go to the safe lane and get farmed, but the time that he was going to rotate to the safe lane, it was already in a dangerous position. And the Pudge just puts so much pressure on the safe lane. You don't have to dive the tower. You can just get the right hook off and guarantee a, a carry kill. We're seeing, uh, as a reaction, Black is going to be picking up a Lincoln Sphere. That's a good guess. choice. To be kind of be able to deal with the glimpse, right? I'm thinking of uh, Pudge dismember as well. Yeah. If he does get hooked, at least he guarantees he gets a waveform off. But it does mean uh, no BKB is going to be picked up by the Morphling anytime soon, so he's still going to be very susceptible to the Kinetic Field Static Storm. Yeah. And that'll be the other really big team fight ability that OG can play off of, especially since they have the Naga Siren Sleep to set it all up. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. We haven't seen that in a while, but it's super terrifying. And it all just, for one second, if you get a little too close to one another, they're going to get that uh, AoE team fight off, and that's something they were using very well at DAC. It's just Naga into Black Hole. Static Storm is, in some ways, very similar. They are really maintaining this kind of split from Faceless once again. Seems like they have this idea that, oh, mid, they're going to be able to reveal that Blink Dagger from Anna. He still had that double damage, too, so Jabs gets blown up pretty quickly. They do manage to get Jarex at least, but it's going to be a two for... Uh, I really like what S4 did there. He instantly gets his Blink Dagger, TPs the mid lane. He didn't go in on the Ogre, the guy that was going to die. He waited to see if there was a little backup, and he almost caught Black. If Black moved an inch closer, stayed half a second longer, that could have been a follow-up kill with a Static Storm. That would have been a huge play there for OG. Either way, still getting two kills is really good for them right now. Yeah, rapid presence of OG into the mid lane not only catches kill, but, but also takes that mid tower. And, uh, Anna run around like some hero out of an anime. He's heading towards bottom lane. Ice 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 is going to be in some trouble here. Anna. Oh, he gets the There it is. The hook. The spike air base buys him a little bit of time. Doesn't have the stun quite yet. And does have the turnaround potentially. Nuts. He needs to be able to stop Jeez. Anna, but he doesn't have the mana to do so. Nuts now hides himself in the trees, hoping to be able to get out. Kinetic field. Not quite catching Anna. That means Nuts is going to be found inside the trees. And should be a simple pop. Anna blinking forward, immediately wanted to take that safe lane tower. Jerks just wanted to help him get to the tower a little faster there. Uh, <laughs> worked out pretty nice. 
And this has gone from Anna suffering in his timing to, to getting that early blink dagger to now have the blink and closing in on Desso pretty fast. He's got eight kills. Is that true? Am I clicked on the right here? That's eight kills. Is that really happening? Well yeah, done, that's Anna. confirmed. Eight Templar Assassin kills at the 15 minute mark. That's kind of insane. And that's a lot of it due to OG setting him up. Like he had a bad laning phase. There's not so much that TA can do by himself. OG's rotation's been very on point. Jarex in particular has just created a monster of an early game for OG. And I think maybe this is part of what OG was doing here um, in their draft. Let let uh, Faces get the same kind of supports. Uh, ones that are very good at lane pressure, good at ganking, but then all they have to do is pick really tanky cores, hard to kill cores. And all of a sudden the Ogre and the CM feel really mediocre. Like, Look at him. He's actually going solo crest up next on the, the Centaur. Okay. I, he does need armor. Tranquils doesn't give you armor anymore. And he's pretty good at damage blocking, so... Solar Crest would give him evasion. It'd make OD kind of bad against him, especially once he gets the evasion part up. But same principle. Bloodlust makes you right-click faster. Grab armor. It's kind of the same thing. Counters the attack speed a bit. And we could see a very fast Roshan from that as well. The TA on that team already. It's pretty easy for them to do it. Get a medallion. Ice 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 looking for a possible kill on S4, but he gets out no problem. And yeah, they're just controlling the map so well right now. They'd love to take the last tier one tower top. And they've got a ward for it. They're just looking for, for faceless heroes. They get a kill, they'll try to take a tower right after. All this aggressive vision in the uh, left-hand side of the map here from OG doesn't quite net them a kill as faces are going to be playing more in their own jungle. But if they do that, it means OG are free to take Roshan, especially with that fresh death on Ana. Really good timing here. That's going to be really tough for faces to take a fight into this. If things go a little bit iffy, they cast on. If it gets really bad, cast Stampede and Initiate. Almost no matter what they do to an Initiate, it's going to be good. Jarek spots him out. He's going to be able to clip jabs there. He's going to be forced to imprison himself, but S4 managed to hold on to his stun. They're going to be able to get him. Oh, so much damage coming out from Ana right now. He's still holding on to a double damage room. What is that hype and fade? I feel I like I've seen him for the last four minutes having DDs. That's, that's all he's got, I guess. <laughs> DDs every day. Holds him for the right time and helps him take Roche faster. I also love that um, Jarex look for the next move. A lot of really good supports will do this. They're, oh, we have this Roche. There's no way they can defend this. I'm going to look for the next kill. So he moves a little bit far out and instantly um, gets a spot that allows S4 to force out the defensive uh, Astral. Really nice move that helps set even more tempo here. So Black is desperately trying to get his first item. Still doesn't have the ultimate or part of the Lincolns. And that just looks so bad for Faceless right now. So a Morphling playing from that far behind doesn't seem like it's going to be very useful. He's like 1,200 gold behind Centaur, for God's sake. Boy, I'm, I'm looking at this Nyx Assassin and thinking, like, th this is not the same kind of offlaner. Last game we had this, uh, this Vatan, uh, right? He kind of sits in lane, always pressures the enemy carry. This time around we have a very uh, aggressive ganking offlaner that hasn't managed to, to pick up too many kills. Did pick up the hand of Midas, so he'll at least still stay somewhat relevant. Mid. Yeah. XY drops kind of low. And uh, not able to pursue. Thinking about it, he's got to position himself for the blink if he wants to. He's actually going to go for nuts on the high ground. Has an Aegis to work with, so he's playing pretty fearlessly at this point. Yeah, he is. So it's kind of uh, a reverse of what we saw last game. Ice 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 plays Abaddon, sits in the lane, gets some stuff done. As for this game, very hard to kill, sits in the lane, gets stuff done. And then it swaps around the other way. Nyx Assassin's got to move around the map, get kills, but he can't really stay in his lane forever because he has to worry about things like Pudge and TA and other setup heroes. So uh, Faceless is forced to go on the aggressive, and they had a bit of a weaker lane start, which means that Morphly can't even get that active early. He's got to force force himself to get farm and catch up a little bit. So I feel like OG has a huge drafting advantage here, not to mention the fact that Radiance is ready to go. 20 minutes in, and now they got to deal with that. They will have Replicate at least, so they're going to be able to steal some illusions and Radiances of their own, but the pressure begins, and the towers are very likely going to take a lot of damage soon. Black may be the uh, victim of an OG rotation soon if he's not careful. I've been feeling like OG with this Radiance. They'd love to actually start forcing some real team fights. Ice, ice, ice. He's sitting, waiting, lurking, hoping. Kerr here slides on by, but maybe he can still catch it. Oh, no. It's just a little too fast. And his ulti runs out. They saw him there. So I doubt the Kerr will get sniped on the way back. I don't know if they care, though. They do kill a replicate as well. That's huge. That's going to ensure that Templar Assassin's Refraction doesn't get broken. 
And they're also going to be farming up the enemy jungle as well. You can see the Nagas aren't already spreading out those illusions. So if Black wants to be able to farm, he has to like go into the enemy jungle or show himself deep up there in the top lane. If he does that, then OG feel very comfortable taking an objective. Nice snag there on a jab. Jerex just solo killed an OD, it looks like. Oh, it got him. oh barely. The rot snags him just at the tail end there from that four staff. That's some powerful funk, man. You're in a different dimension, but the smell still goes through. <laughs> Guarantees you the kill. You can't get away. Yeah. It just it sticks on you, you know? It goes with you. It's like you're getting one elevator that somebody smoked in. It's with you the whole day. Same ice, thing. Ice, ice, ice. He really wants to find this Naga Siren pickoff, but he's going to be found instead. Stunned up, takes a majority of the damage. The Static Storm making sure there's no opportunity for a Spike Carapace and No-Tail. Uh, sorry, actually, Fly was the one who picked up that kill. I thought No-Tail snagged it, but looks like the Static Storm is just a bit too much. Maybe Anna can actually grab a little bit more here. Two down on the side of Faceless. He knows he finds anybody. Pretty much guaranteed dead. Fortunately, Nut did manage to TP out. Looks like they have some very defensive vision on the left-hand side. They had a ward counter and ward uh, combination that saw Anna. Definitely a very good place to have it since this is like the, the key area for Pudge to stand. It's, he can hook right. mid lane, he can hook top lane. He'll be moving there often. But the, the key to the team fights in the ganks is basically just Nick's assassin. If they kill him, who's going to set up the fights? It's not going to be CM, it's not going to be Ogre. They don't have a reliable initiation. And XY might get three shot here, although Anna has got to be careful. Anna being held in place. They do have the hook, but he's actually going to throw it out onto Jabs, knowing that Anna has the Aegis. They really want to fight this one out, but Nuts does manage to finish off that Aegis with his freezing field. The Blink Dagger is going to be up for Anna, but he actually hit him with the waveform. Oh, he doesn't stun. manage to blink himself away. What a huge stun, though. The Centaur controls up the fight. Now they get their turnaround. They're going to be able to blow up the Morphling as he's rooted in. Gets him with the ensnare. Turnaround from Ice Ice Ice. Manages to catch the Centaur, but there is the extra hold. No Tails making sure that nobody from Faceless escapes alive. And they all go down there. Triple kill for Anna for you Compendium Predictors and huge team fight there. S4 absolutely changed the scope of that team fight. It looked really good for Faces catching Anna, preventing his blink after he respawned. But when you stun three heroes, the whole <laughs> yeah. fight's uh, that's over. That's a ravage right there. And you only have to wait 13 seconds for the next one. Especially when Anna is already hitting so hard, you give him just enough to disable. He starts throwing out those side blade hits. Gonna see the replay once again there. Great hook is well on the OD, banishes himself at the perfect timing and is forced to try to kill the CM. And here comes the big moment, the waveform to guarantee disable the blink. Really well done by Black, but that stun gives OG enough time to catch up. Jerex again locking down yet another core. This support Pudge has just been out of control and it makes me wonder where does the where it where did this hero go? You know, it was such the rage not so long ago yep. and then it just kind of fell off for favor of monkey king and earth spirit and all these other four positions i, it, I think it was picked sometimes in the group stage but mm -hmm. it's not half the time it was it just didn't look very good it's definitely a sometimes pick from the support position and maybe the uh the excitement around monkey king that kind of stuff is has fallen off and og knows like hey we kind of got rec game one maybe we need to focus on just really safe drafts that make a lot of sense and in this game i think the pudge has been really solid especially with the gank heroes that Faceless has been running. The, the Nyx Assassin was an early pick. His damage is a bit limited, and usually the way those burst heroes work is if you survive the burst, you're going to win the fight, and Pudge is great for that. Ice, 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 once again. Put himself deep into the enemy jungle, kind of scouting things out, doesn't find anybody, so he'll farm a camp while OG take that tier 2 bottom. They Faceless know they can't really contest OG at this point. Uh, the team fight's just far too strong. So they're just looking for picks, but OG really isn't giving any of them to him. Uh, the only person who was really separated was No-Tail, but you can see he's playing off of his uh, towers almost the entire time and just letting his illusions do all the work. Yeah, that's the way to play it. The only downside to that is it usually delays your song of the Siren maxing out, but and he's completely set in his position right now. Um, and another big item picked up, and it's going to grab an Orchid. That's one of the best counters against Morphling in the game. Very effective against uh, OD as well. He's got BKB queued up, but he's pretty much just starting it. He's got a couple of heroes here. OG spending some time farming together, farming their way through the jungle as they head up top. They just stop that tier one tower from going down in the process. They're going to run into XY. That'll be a freebie. Beyond godlike already for Anna at 25 minutes into the game. That's actually insane. Any hero that he finds right now, I mean, if he finds Morphling by himself, there's a Lincoln to stop it. But any other hero... He's going to get a kill this game, I think. Maybe not Nyx. That's, that one would be a little harder, but... 
And in the meantime, Nick Assassin just spending some time hitting up neutrals. He's going to be looking for a courier snipe here. He actually might get this one. Oh, no. Not position yourself right farther right. No. Ice, ice, ice. Like, damn it all. Yep. It just keeps on sneaking by him every time. If he had been there like four seconds earlier just to get to the high ground before the courier was in vision, that would have been a snipe out. He's going to hopefully wait for it to come right back out. And I don't see any items on it instantly, so slightly wrong timing. Manta. Soon to be complete for no tail. And I have to wonder, like, once you get that much split pushing power, faceless. I mean, they still do have the late game, right? Like, the early game has gone terrible, but they still have OD and Morphling to be able to fall back. They're, they're going right? to try to kill Anna here or somebody else. They're spotting, they're smoked up, but he didn't end up following no tail. Maybe not feeling confident about that kill, but uh, wasted smoke there for faceless. That could be a little expensive as the game continues. When you're losing gank, the best way to get back in the game and losing smokes for nothing is not the best trade. But at least OD's farming very well. He's ahead of Centaur. That's good. I was about to say, well is a, a relative term, right? Nuts. Fortunately, he picked up a haste rune, so will manage to slide on by that attempted gank. I, I really like what Centaur is doing with his build this game. That's for making the right decisions. The Solar Crest Vanguard, he grabs the magic resistance perk 10%. It's not a huge amount, but it's enough. And then he's going to go straight into a heart. He knows that his opponents have damage problems. Uh, Morphling is just going to buy Lincoln's, going to go E-Blade. But Centaur is just going to have so much stinking HP, I don't even think it matters. It's it's a counter against pure damage from Outworld Devour. It's, it's a great solution against burst damage as well from Magic Nuke. So I think S4's build is he's ahead of schedule, and he's building the perfect things. Hey, third time's the charm for Ice Ice Ice. He finally does find that courier kill. The problem is, uh, for me anyway, it's like you're using your three position to kill couriers. Right? It's, yeah. it's not what you wanted to be doing with this Nyx Assassin, but because the first 20 minutes of the game went so poorly, it's what you've been forced to do. And they're grouped pretty heavily right now. Fear in a smoke right now, I believe. Uh, OD will show mid, hitting creeps, so maybe they'll move out again. But And Ogre's still split pushing top. This is a little dangerous for him, but the benefit is that if he does end up getting killed here, it's only an Ogre. And it's pretty fast with Bloodlust Tranquil Boots. Yeah, somebody's got to push out these lanes, right? Yep. The Morphling, may, the, he, like, even the Morphling doesn't feel super comfortable with it because he could be caught by the Blink Centaur stun, could be caught by the Glimmer Cape uh, of the Disruptor. Fly just, you know, walking in in Viz and managing to get the Static Storm Kinetic Field combination. So it's not like they, they can actually rely on the Morphling to push deep into the enemy side of things and threaten these tier twos. So XY is a more disposable hero will try and accomplish the same thing. They are going to clean up Roshan really rapidly, though. Uh, and that's in addition to the Solar Crest here. So dies right away. And in case OG didn't feel confident enough in team fights, it's going to be even easier for TA. He is still a little vulnerable. That's always a thing you got to worry about when playing this hero. But uh, now with two respawns, it's going to be pretty safe, especially if he saves BKB until after the respawn. It's got to be feeling so terrible for Faceless because they can't beat OG in split pushing. There's a Naga Siren, and they can't beat him in team fight right now. Like, as long as OG don't lose in the pickoff game, then they should just be able to build more and more of an advantage. They've already taken almost every single outer tower. All that's left is the top tier two. And with this Aegis, uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to try and at least poke at high ground and see how Faceless respond. Yeah, th this is definitely their moment here. Get the lanes pushed out. They might need one hero to guarantee top lane gets pressured. Um, no tail going to send his illusions across the map. That's one way to do it, but XY's been doing a pretty good job pushing that lane out. Jab's doing it in the meantime. Uh, can they catch Black on the mid lane? They could song for this, maybe? They're just going uh, to jump forward with Anna. Nice stun. A three-man goes out from Ice Ice Ice, but he still managed to snag him with the ensnare. Jerix is lined up for a perfect hook. The dismember allows Anna to be able to clean up that kill. A carry down for 40 seconds. What better time to go high ground and see if they could force a buyback. And they still got level three song at the side. And the hook, ooh, that would have been huge. He's got gem on Jerix, so if he did grab that Nyx kill, that would have been one of the easier ways to, to clean up the mid lane. Oh, jump forward here, going for nuts deep inside the base, but he is going to be stunned up by XY. Anna will turn his attention, I'm presuming, towards that tier three. He was hoping for the one away at it. If he got the melt strike, that's definitely a dead sea. And they oh, go in. Nice stun from S4, managed to catch jabs, blows him up immediately. Good coordination between the two cores of OG. Ice 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 pops a shrine in order to stay alive against Anna. Now he turns his attention towards XY, but realizes with the buyback, he doesn't really need to stick around. Backs away. 
resets the whole entire fight for OG to start sieging the base once again. They're hitting the building. Does get stunned. Mana Drain is pretty bad for him, but he's not going to have any refraction to work off of. But the sleep comes out just in time. They save the Aegis, and that's a big time win for OG. They still have plenty of time to work with with this Aegis, so if they go, they back up to base or they just shrine, they can probably push high ground again in the next minute or two. Yeah, that's a really good choice by them to back up there. They did their best fishing attempts. They did get the OD kill and buyback. I, that's absolutely worth it. Three, six, and zero now on jabs, having a rough game. And it's just the typical problem with OD. He does do a lot of damage, but if you have to worry about all these disables, magic damage, you got to get BKB, and then you only have 12 armor. And against somebody that can lower eight armor from the meld and seven <laughs> yeah. from the deso, you have this big target on your forehead. Please stun me once so I don't BKB and then hit me two times and I die. So it looks like his solution is kind of the obvious one. Go for the Shivas. Increase in intelligence as well as armor. But there's got to be some other options, right? Where, where are the support items? Where are the, yeah. the helpful items that can save this OD? We've got a Solar Crest for the Ogre, but Nuts, he would be the other one to pick it up. He doesn't have anywhere close to that four stat. Yeah, he's been having a tough game as well. I um, mean, he's been spent a lot of time in the jungle, but I'm sure he spent most of this on Observer Wards. And even using a Solar Crest to save allies defensively, it's very difficult to do it at the right time. You have to throw it down before the first attack even lands to make it really effective. And it's really, when they're initiating instantly, it's tough to react perfectly. OG have come right back. Start throwing the illusions in one by one. I like this. It's a good way to be able to stop the uh, potential initiation from the Nyx's app with that Blink Dagger. And gives Anna a lot more freedom. Whack on that tier three. So that's going to be tier three down. OG are not going to back up and hit shrines. They still want to be able to work around with his Aegis. The melee racks down to half health and falling rapidly. Faceless are not going to fight this one. They're letting the Morphling push out the top lane. And honestly, I think that's the best choice. They couldn't actually fight that. I could not see a way they can actually win a team fight of five on five against OG, even if it was inside their own base. You know, maybe the best thing they could do is initiate stun both Pudge and the TA with the same disable, but they've got to kill the TA twice, not to mention the rest of the heroes. And it's, Centaur was even holding his Solar Crest. He doesn't leave him a vulnerability, keeps his armor and his evasion up. Um, they had a pipe active and ready to go for Pudge if needed, so it, they just had so many ways to cover each other. And Faces is still having that same damage problem. It's almost all about the E-Blade Dagon. And against, or the E-Blade uh, Adaptive Strike, and against uh, a TA with Aegis, it's just not the most reliable damage. Ice, Ice, Ice. Is he going to find a solo kill? I don't know if he can kill him. It's been so long since he's seen an opportunity to do Nyx Assassin things, but it's looking like the damage is lacking, and we do have a Glimmer Cape. He's going to Yule Scepter. Has another mana burn. Oh, oh, gets him. Fly held on to that Glimmer Cape for so long. He had to, because if he uses it instantly, Yules is used on him, and yep. it dispels it, which would guarantee the kill. So it was actually smart of him to, to hold that as long as he did, but unfortunately for him, does get killed. It was pretty much the only way that works. The Glimmer did give him enough magic resistance to not die in one burst. And a 30-second respawn time. Disruptor's alive already. Yeah. Disruptor is also, uh, we saw him earlier, he actually killed the, the Morphling Replicant. Right? Just like okay. they had the Shadow oh, Shaman last right, time, Glimpse, right? right? Yeah, so they had they grabbed the Naga Siren. They're like, oh, sweet, we can push out the top lane with this Radiance Illusion. Nope. Just in, in instantly gets deleted by Fly. All right, No-Tails picked up a Diffusal Blade as well, making his Illusions actually pretty good at right-clicking. Um, and obviously breaking uh, any kind of Ghost Scepter. Uh, Nyx, did he always? No, no, he was on Yules the whole time. I think it was the Morphling I'm thinking of with the Ghost Scepter. It's a great way to deal with Morphling. Uh, draining his mana is also useful. There's a lot of really good uses for the item in this game. It'll remove Bloodlust. It, it's a great pickup by No-Tail. Yeah. Great choice. Gives them a considerable peak at this mid-game point where OG are looking to be able to just close it out. Ooh, Ooh the hook. Almost snagging. Came spinning in, but doesn't quite go far enough. OG. Now it just comes to the problem of like, okay, we just have to deal with this split push enough where we're finally able to go high ground. It looks like they finally did it. Yep. They corralled all those heroes out of the top lane. Got the creep wave going. Took that tier two. And uh, there's illusions all over the map. Like, they're in their base. That's it's going to be the story of the game for the next 10 or so minutes, most likely. Um, well, with Aegis running out, I don't know if OG's going to want to chance this. They're already down one game. They do not want to throw this kind of a lead. It would be amazingly bad for them. But I don't know if Faceless has the best team fight. It's going to take a lot of very careful focus fire, chain stuns, and burst damage. 
for them to win these fights. OG gonna start out just poking at it. They're gonna push in both the mid lane as well as the top lane at the same time. And see where they can find some connections onto that tier three. Or potentially even loosen up one of these heroes with the Naga Siren or find the hook. That's gonna be XY caught. He has no buyback, so it's now going to be Faceless left in a four versus five. The jump in. Oh, what a, stun. what a three man stun. Jab's going to start laying in Anna as soon as humanly possible. He wants to be able to rack up this intelligence and start bursting down some heroes, but he just doesn't have it. He instantly goes down. The Song of the Siren used beautifully by No Tail will now set up not just the kill on the OD who had that BKB out, as well as the follow up on the Nyx Assassin. They take the fifth member of Faceless out and That's force it. the GG. Game one, a stomp by Faceless. Game two, OG stomp right back. And it looked like the game could continue there, but the, the power of Hudge shows again. All it takes is just one little hook in the right time to grab the one guy that doesn't have buyback, and the team fight just seems straightforward. And if things ever got bad, pop the song instead.